Hey, what up? It's Brad with Home Love Construction. I'm sitting here with a bunch of good friends of mine. All contractors are in the contracting field, and we're going to do a contracting roundtable today and basically give you a, a, a little peek, a window into the world of general contracting what it, and what it's really all about and how it's going in 2022. So I want to start off by letting everybody introduce themselves. So we'll start off over here with Mr. Gary Houston. Uh, hi everyone, Gary Houston with G2 Home Services, and we are your kitchen and bathroom remodeling specialist. Uh, today we're having a little bit talk about the construction industry and some of the pitfalls and issues that we're having with that. Thank you. Hi, I'm Ryan Bluson with Gale Insulation. Uh, we, we specialize in insulation, of course, with gutters and shelving and all that nature. So, you know, I work and talk about that as well, and sitting to help you guys out with all those future projects too there. And I'm Brad with Home Love Construction. So specifically, we specialize in luxury renovations. So think large kitchens, whole homes, room additions, custom homes, things like that. Uh, we also offer design build services. So if you're like, hey, I have this idea for a way that I want my house to look, but I don't know how the hell to get it there. We can help you all the way from getting the design finalized, like literally all the way from the architectural stuff down to the actual selections, like interior design wise and then go all the way, bring it all the way to construction. Um, so I work with uh, my dad, Jeff. I've worked with almost everybody at this table in some capacity. Uh, and so I'm really excited for all of them to get to, get to share their expertise because they've poured a lot into our business. Uh, and so I'm excited for what we're gonna get to show you today. And I'm Jason Avery. I own Avery Construction. We remodel kitchens and bathrooms, build new room additions all over the greater Tampa Bay area. I have been 11 years in the industry and I have written the book on this topic. It's called Constructing Success, The Blueprints for a Referral-Based Business. Uh, with that, I also uh, am partners in a custom cabinet factory based out of Clearwater, uh, where we build and design custom wood products, any species, any style, and any color, and we provide those to contractors at wholesale pricing. As before said, I'm Jeff Miller. I'm with Home Love Construction, I also Renova Construction, and we're here in the Tampa Bay area and, and basically what he said. So uh, today what we're going to do is we're going to have a round table discussion to kind of discuss what we've been dealing with uh, in the last year and change uh, within our industry that have, it's kind of unprecedented. So we want to discuss some of the things that have worked for us that we've had to uh, change within our companies, uh, kind of discuss what, um, maybe come up with best practices on what has really worked well and just have a discussion and we're gonna do it in front of you. And uh, hopefully this will help any contractors that are watching the job help their business and uh, they can learn from it. So uh, today our topics that we're gonna be discussing are gonna be the supply chain issues that we're having. Uh, we're just getting products in. We're gonna be talking about labor shortages and how that's affected our industry and what we're doing to you know, solve those issues that are brought in by it. Uh, inflation, uh, we've had unprecedented for at least our lifetime uh, in the, this industry, uh, inflation that has just really st strapped a lot of contractors. And uh, we also wanna talk about the timelines and expectations for customers and trying to meet those timelines that we you know we set for ourselves but there's just a lot of factors that are unknown so how we're dealing with that and then also knowing our value and what we're bringing to the table and or to the customer and uh, in how we have to get paid for that in order to continue to bring that service so with that let's get started so on the first topic we're going to get into supply chain issues and uh so it's real we uh <laughs> see it on the news every day you know there's uh lots of container ships sitting off the coast of california somewhere just waiting for entry into the country uh so uh I, we don't see it so much affecting us in the way of drywall and lumber and and the basic materials for construction you know concrete blocks are still available but when it comes to those finished materials the things like you know specialty sinks and faucets or specialty tile for backsplashes or showers that's where my customers are feeling it the most and on so a, a lot of this can be mitigated up front from my perspective by just helping the client choose the right products knowing the availability before we confirm 
confirm the order and, and in a lot of cases ordering this stuff well in advance. And uh, um, beyond you know the things that are being shipped in from out of overseas, it really comes down to the manufacturing process, which I think will carry over into our labor discussion. But you know things like windows that used to take you know eight or nine weeks are now taking 16 weeks to receive. <laughs> right. I have to order windows before I can even apply for a permit if I want any chance of having them in a reasonable time to start a job. But th those are some of the most common things that I'm faced yeah. with. Yeah. Yeah, and, and I think for like for me, I, I don't necessarily keep up so much on what's what's going on globally. I'm I'm actually very bad at keeping up with the news. But like Jason was saying, getting the uh, getting stuff ordered early has never been like such a such a demanding thing. Like mm -hmm. for us, it's basically the windows, the cabinets, and the trusses all have to be bought basically like a week after signing the contract. Otherwise, they're just not there on time, and then it turns into like having an open project. So that caught that actually caught us unawares on multiple projects when the whole thing started started to happen we were like okay you know 10 week time frame on the windows you know we'll be fine and then all of a sudden we have some a custom window order that takes six months to get in and we have a room addition that we started building on certain on one time frame and then it became a different one so you know now we've been able to adjust for that but um and then i think the other thing is like cabinets and nailing down like exactly what they want up front you know, I, I see Gary nodding his head. I'd, I'd like to hear what you have to say on like Absolutely. having people pick what they want up right. front. So a big part of our industry and what we deal with is selections and things like that and getting that stuff done early and getting accommodating the customer to make sure that they pick that stuff out. Um, you know, back to kind of what Jason said, even with a lot of the tile furnishings and things like that, um, you have you have to get it ordered early uh, because even sometimes we're ordering, ordering tile, ordering things, the vendors are saying, yes, it's available. And then a month later, they're coming back to us and going, hey, this is on back order now. Mm -hmm. And now we're not going to get it for five months, six months. Yeah. Um, you know, if we're in the middle of a renovation project, and again, we do leave a little bit of time to get the job started just for this process. Um, but if you're in the middle of a renovation project and all of a sudden your floor tile are not coming in for six months, uh, that, put, that puts a hindering on it. So you got to make sure that you take care of that early and get through that process. Yeah. So me yeah. personally, um, I've actually talked to, you know, different types of builders, whether it's, you know, um, um, your your uh, uh, custom builders who do like you know three two or three homes a year versus your your larger builders who do like I don't know a hundred homes a year you know like it's whatever it is they're all having the same issues that you mentioned before windows taking you know six to eight months sometimes and I, I've had homes because I do insulation as my primary thing and what they end up telling me is well I'm not ready yet like well we had this scheduled like three weeks ago what's going on because I'm ready for you it's actually the backwards for me sometimes mm -hmm. but all of a sudden when they're ready they want me right away and I'm like well now I'm two weeks out you know, like I, 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 same thing with giving proper expectation. That's something that you know we had to we had to improve on for the last you know couple of years during all this you know stuff going on, and we, we've improved on our end to the best of our ability. You know, and of course you know with everything else going on, we're we're doing fairly well with ex expectations and things like that. But on the builder side, they're still having their struggles. But now they know at least, hey, you know, I got to give myself six months or something like that for windows or whatever else. So I definitely see and have heard all the things on that end. And as far as you know, our our side. You know, we, we had, you know, um, uh, 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 some uh, product issues as well last year, you mm -hmm. know, between, you know, Texas having their freeze going on, I mean, because we do spray foam, right? That affected us drastically. You know, that, that pushed us back by one to two months oh, wow. just to get material because that- For spray foam for, specifically? For spray foam specifically, um, yes, because that same chemical was used for painters and things like that, you know, so we gonna, were- I was gonna touch on that, the, the paint products also yeah. went behind because yes. of that, there's that big freeze, whatever it was. And so now Sherwin-Williams is still trying to catch up on all yeah. of their issues with paint. Yeah. Apparently one of the largest paint manufacturers for the base goods is based out of, out of Texas. Mm -hmm. And when that freeze happened, it really put everybody back. Yeah, yeah. with, with those chemicals, from what I've heard, there's like only two major manufacturers that actually produce that chemical. So yeah. like once one goes down, there goes your production <laughs> yeah. right there. It's, yeah. it's crazy. Yeah, and to add to that, one of the things that happens within our industry uh, is that when there is a shortage of any material for a short amount of time. I had, was talking to a window installer the other day and they were they ran out of tap cons where he normally buys tap cons. Mm -hmm. So the knee jerk reaction is for them to find somebody that has tap cons and to buy a lot of tap cons. <laughs> 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 <All right? laughs> so the, based on the, the room, we all know where this is going. Mm -hmm. So now there's a, an artificial shortage of materials that are coming in and it, so it does, it goes in waves. Uh, you know, somebody will get a big shipment in, but you may end up waiting. We waited two and a half weeks for white paint at yeah. Sherwin Williams to get yeah. a specific kind of paint yeah. that the customer needed to match what they had. Um, uh, plywood, we all went through that. I know that probably impacted you the, uh, really bad. 
Uh, but all of these things come in waves and they're not always the same. They're not always what you expect they're gonna be, so they'll, they'll blindside us. Uh, and there's, there's really no way to predict this. So uh, the best solution for this, I think if we're gonna get to solutions now on this matter, mm -hmm. uh, the best solution for this is planning. Plan, plan, and then plan some more, and then just get your purchase orders together. So, yeah, and so I, I like what you said about you know I got a, uh, a delivery date on trusses, and this mm -hmm. is actually for an addition I was putting onto my own house, and uh, you know, I was <laughs> thinking I was going to get some special service, but the delivery date got pushed back from the original date. It was pushed back 30 days, and then from that 30 day mark, it was pushed back two more weeks, yeah. and then the two more weeks mark got pushed back three more days before they actually arrived on the job site. And uh, and again, I don't know that that's that's not necessarily a, a, a shipping channel issue as much mm -hmm. as it is a maybe a labor shortage issue which will be our next yeah. topic but from yeah. from the manufacturer's point of view yeah. but uh, even in my cabinet factory I've, I've witnessed the same thing for a minute drawer slides that you, mm -hmm. you know put on the mm -hmm. sides of your drawers mm -hmm. they mm -hmm. were scarce yeah. for a moment so yeah. you know we went to every local store that we knew ha might have a small inventory of drawer slides and we mm -hmm. bought every one we could get our hands on <laughs> and, 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 then, and then we also put in an order with three different vendors and said we'll see who gets here first right. you know so yeah. it just you know things that we have to do that are out of the ordinary to keep the yeah. flow going yeah and it all started with toilet paper <laughs> <laughs> well it's funny you mentioned that the drawers like my, my manufacturer helps me make the the custom built-in closets that we build had the same issue yeah. you know like that yeah. like it was the drawer plates like the front of it yeah. mm -hmm. that's all they were missing yeah. i couldn't get that for what was it six months yeah. Yeah. after yeah. i placed the order which is usually three weeks yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. no yeah. it was terrible <laughs> Yeah, and, and so the, I mean, the, the biggest thing is, like I know we have expectations to talk about later, but this does change the whole expectation mm -hmm. of, of what people expect. Yeah. Because the typical, if you think like, you know, take yourself back five years ago, it's like, I wanna build a room addition. I can just run down to Home Depot and get everything yeah. basically that I need to build that. But now I, I think like with, you know, the, I'm sure you're seeing this in, in the homes that you're in and we're seeing it in, in the jobs we're doing, there's, we're, there's so many, you know, with the advent of the internet, social media, like all that actually is distributing more information to people. They're picking things that are, that are more specific and harder to get a lot of times. So that just changes the whole timeline and planning, yeah. the planning for everything. Well, and, and while 90% of what you're looking for might still be at Home Depot, yeah. and uh, I needed, you need 100% of it. Though. I needed the yeah. fire spray foam to yeah. fill the holes where our yeah. wires go yeah. through. Yep. And every store in town was sold out of yeah. fire spray yeah. foam. Yeah. Well, I can't close up the walls until I have the fire or, spray foam in. So or, it's, or the white J channel is gone. Yeah. Right? Like you can get all everything yep. else, but the yep. white J channel is gone. Yep. You know? and, and I had the same problem too, you know, because you know, we, we do fire blocking as well for homes. And that we, we couldn't get the bulk order of that, that yeah. can of spray foam for those fire blocks. We just yeah. couldn't do it. Yeah. Gary, yeah. yeah. any, anything else to add you're running into? I mean, obviously, we're, we, we have a small cabinet shop and we have the same issues with the drawer slides um, lumber lumber available now it starts starting to be a little bit better now um, but a lot of the the issues I think more than anything are the small things like you guys mm -hmm. touched on it's yeah. the things that you need to complete that order yeah. it's the little things that may sometimes fly under the radar because you know that you can just get it and yep. right now that's how yep. we're having to adjust is to make sure that we've got all of those things we've actually put like a logistics system in place to make sure that we have all of those little details for every single job and we store them and unfortunately it's taking up space it's adding to our warehouse making it a little bit inconvenient mm -hmm. but having everything there when the job starts is just that much more beneficial to the project yeah you know and you know you mentioned the warehouse space i'm having that same problem mm -hmm. too because we have to stock up on all this extra material yeah. that you know we have projected jobs like three four months down the road yeah. which we normally plan ahead by you know a month or so yeah now you're planning six months so, and and yeah. so, yeah, a warehouse space is absolutely a real thing, too. Yeah. In, in my cabinet factory, I get con I got lots of contractors' <laughs> jobs there, but then when their job, mine. when they, <laughs> we got yours out the door, yeah. And uh, when yeah. but when when I've got their job sitting there, and then their the contractor's project gets yeah. delayed, yeah. now it's sitting in my shop longer than it should be, yeah. and you know, it's hard to kind of keep the flow going when you run yeah. out of the floor space, yeah. But uh, I, I think a lot of this is manufacturer uh, uh, labor issues as well you know maybe and, and maybe even trucking shipping yeah. delivery yeah. issues labor shortages yeah. that are out yeah. there that are real yeah. but i we're all facing you know labor issues in our industry i mean yeah. what i know about that this industry is that for every five guys that retire there's only four new kids that come into the business right. so how's that affecting you guys and what are you doing about it jeff 
Well, on the labor end of things, uh, basically we, we use a lot of subcontractors which help mm -hmm. us get the spread it around where we can actually pull, if you're not ready, we can pull from this one. Uh, I think on the, this, how it affects the supply chain is kind of out of our control. So the only way to do that is just better planning and purchase orders, like I said earlier. Um, but labor shortages as a whole, uh, the, I, I would say that uh, we've discussed on how that is affecting everybody that we deal with across the board uh, from just getting the materials to the job because there's no truck drivers, you know, or heck for that matter, uh, have you tried to buy a truck lately? I mean, <laughs> if, if anybody's looked at how much a truck costs, you know, that's going to affect our suppliers, which is going to affect pricing, which is our next topic. And we can see how all these are kind of related. But one key thing that I want to bring up is that both the supply chain and labor shortages extend the length of a job, mm -hmm. which when we're starting a job about every week, and when you have jobs that last 10 months where they used to take three, yeah. um, you get very anxious customers. Right. You get- Anxious um, is a really nice word. That it was a really, yes. Yeah, they're actually, you know, the, some of them maybe, some of them are quite pleasant. We've had some great yeah. customers that have just been fantastic. And then we have others, most, yeah, same most, same. most yeah. Yeah, yeah, but you, there's- Some can be very exciting. Probably about 10%, <laughs> yeah. maybe a 10% number that are just getting so angry that they're starting we're gonna to talk to our attorney and blah, blah, blah. And usually it goes nowhere because usually they talk to the attorney and it's like, oh, your contractor's telling you this? Well, it's true. <laughs> Haven't you seen the news? <laughs> <laughs> you, do you turn on the TV? Exactly. But, um, but at any rate, uh, labor shortages have been affecting us and you know, we just basically, it's just covering our basis is how we've been handling this with layering our, our let's say packing the bench, so to speak, yeah. so mm -hmm. that we're, uh, we've got some depth to the field here, but uh, how well, I, I'm sorry to interrupt you, but I, I know you, you mentioned um, you um, have these projects that go on from three months to like eight months or whatever it usually is. You have to have somebody manage those projects, Correct. and that yeah. increases the cost mm -hmm. exponentially. I can only imagine, right? right? Yeah. Yes, it's, it's just ridiculous. Yeah. yeah. So it, when it comes to the the in-house labor, finding the actual people to do the actual remodeling, mm -hmm. and uh, it's absolutely a somebody trick. And uh, and, yeah. uh, and you know there is no secret sauce that I've found, but it really takes a lot of extra effort and hard work. And uh, we have to run constant ads on Indeed and on Craigslist. We, I have had to hire a full-time business development manager in charge of finding new talent. And uh, every organization we visit or every group we get the chance to speak in, we're asking our referral partners and friends to help us recruit the talent. And so it's, a, it's an ongoing mission. And then most importantly is that once you capture the talent, how do you keep, keep them, them and turn not turn them over? You gotta, we gotta yeah. treat people very well these days, and uh, <laughs> uh, you, you know you can't be the cheap one in yeah. town. No, and uh, really um, so, and again, hence that'll carry over to our next conversation about pricing. Yeah. When it uh, yeah. when you get into how do we keep the labor happy? What do you well, do to keep yeah. them happy here? Oh, uh, well, <laughs> obviously it starts with their paycheck, right? A lot of people want to make sure their wallet is taken care of, but you have to build a culture in the industry too that allows your your employees to be happy, to be mm -hmm. successful. Um, you know, if you got some guy in there yelling and screaming or hollering yeah. and hooting all the time, uh, it's not gonna it's not gonna set you up for success with your people. So yeah. um, we like to build a culture to make sure that the guys are happy. We use our, our system's a little bit separ uh, different than the way you guys do things. We use mostly in-house employees and just yeah. sub out what we need to, um, but. With that, um, not only is there you know keeping them happy, uh, bonuses, performance based, obviously, and things like that. Um, but the flip side of that is finding talent um, that is, I'll say, good enough to our standards. Yeah. Um, everybody walking this earth says thinks they're a painter, or I'm a drywall guy, or I you know I can do this. <laughs> and very quickly we we notice we bring them in and they're supervised pretty heavily the first week or so they're there. And most of the guys don't make it through the first week because. Yeah. They, we have a standard that we set to. We have customers that we have to answer to. I don't know about you guys, but most of the time we're in the homes, the customers are there. You know, there yeah. a lot of times the customers oh, yeah. are there every day. Oh, yeah. So they're seeing the work being done. They're standing there. They may be sitting off to the corner and looking at what we're doing. And with that being said, you have to make sure that they're not only a good worker, but they, they present themselves well. They speak into intelligently to these customers. Um, they're not using profanity. They're not out for a cigarette break every five seconds, you know, they, they have to be productive as well. So um, that's the big thing with the labor industry that I'm seeing right now and what we're trying to overcome um, and make sure that we can find those types of people to represent our company well as well. Yeah. I have a question. Yeah. 
I, my my question for everybody here is: Have you seen? Because obviously the the labor thing is getting more challenging. You're spending more money on ads. You you literally hired a person to fix this right. problem. For us, we changed the way we we run our business model due to issues with labor versus being able to manage subcontractors easier for us. Mm -hmm. You the issues you just described. I'm sure you guys in the insulation are. I'm sure there's there's turnover just like everywhere else. Like the have you guys seen? Uh, Maybe, you know, people who are in our industry, have you seen a drop off in people being like, I'm just going to go do something else? Has anybody, because I know I've seen that from a couple like subcontractor crews who basically closed up shop and they're like, I'm, I'm going to go. I mean, I, I know a guy who used to run a crew was super talented and he went and became a UPS driver because he's like, I'm just not going to deal with this anymore. So, I'm, I mean, it's, it's like, like you were saying, five people go out and retire, four people come in. I mean, I think that's, that might be accelerating a little bit. Um, so it's going to be even more important right. to, to retain the talent and to give correct expectations. The, all of the new um, talent, if you will, uh, in some lack of talent, new people coming into the field that are subcontractors, plumbing, mechanical, electrical, they hire and bring in. You're not – that level of expectation, this, co this contractor that we hire has always done a really good job for us. Mm -hmm. But this time, right. a guy showed up, was drinking beer on the job, <laughs> you know, didn't do this job right, right, forgot to do this or the other. Now the con you know, your customer is seeing this and calling you because you haven't seen it yet. You know, they're living there, right. you're not. So it raises that uh, level of um, anxiousness mm -hmm. within the customer right. or, or their doubt in your abilities to manage a job. And those things come with training and with new people coming on board and that hiring pool that we're all having to deal with. So. I, in building my own addition to my own house, had a Mason uh, company that I hired, you know, as the subcontractor for, and uh, he had to delay the start. He said, Jason, I had to fire the guy because I found a bottle of booze in my work truck. And uh, after two weeks of being postponed and postponed because yeah. he didn't have any additional talent to add to the team right away, yeah. I said, can you just send me the alcoholic and make him drive his own car? <laughs> <laughs> Well, it's, it, it's funny you mentioned that, like not that specific scenario, mind you, but you know, there, there are people, you know, that, that. It's funny because I know the guy who's like, I love Zach. He's a great guy. Not the alcoholic. The other guy. Well, it's funny because like, you know, going back to the, um, the, the, the culture you want to have in your workplace, you know, there, there's those few people who do a great, fantastic job when they're on the field. Right. When they're in your warehouse, when they're in your office, that's when they start being a little bit rambunctious, they're getting anxious, they're you know, doing whatever they do. So we, I know some companies are already doing this, but we're, we're learning to, to drop ship people. You know, like, you know, we, 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 we put the, the product on site and we have those people go directly, drive their own vehicles to the job site, get the job done, they go back home. That way our yeah. culture is, is more positive, mm -hmm. it's, more to, it's, it's less toxic, and it, it, I just feel that it helps improve the overall production of the whole thing. Great solution. Yeah, that's a really and, that's cool. And on a more serious note about you know keeping the labor and the talent on staff, yeah. I, what I've found in my industry is that when you pay people hourly, they tend to milk the clock. Sometimes yeah. it's not intentionally. It may be because the materials didn't arrive in time, and they're just sitting around on a paint yeah. can waiting for yeah. it. And uh, mm -hmm. but but there's times where you know again inefficiency on their side. Right. It's going to bleed the margin to death and destroy the contractor's ability to be successful. Mm -hmm. And uh, if I pay salary to these individuals, and uh, it's the nature that I'm going to want to try and squeeze as much into that work week as I can, and maybe ask for a little extra time when mm -hmm. I really need to get something done. But that undue stress on the worker is going to then ultimately result in him turning over and leaving. So piecework has been the method that we've adopted. Mm -hmm. We found it to be the most fair method to. Yeah and uh, uh, hire guys by because there's a set rate of labor that we yeah. know is a fair rate to accomplish a specific task. Yeah. And now if the guy does take a couple extra cigarette breaks and he's a little slower getting it done, yeah. it doesn't cost us because yeah. we're paying the same fixed amount. If yeah. he's the, ex the that excelling type of in individual who comes in early and, and yeah. leaves late, works straight through lunch, mm -hmm. they can get twice as much done, they can make twice as much money or get some more free time to go back and spend with their family. So can, creating that quality yeah. work life and <clears throat> culture yeah. as you referred to. Can I ask a, a specific detailed question that I think like a lot of people would like to know about, about your business? Because just knowing, like Jason taught us in Home Love Construction a lot about how to how to run a contracting business. Have you, do you have anybody who's working in the field or is it like a crew leader who's making six figures right now? Oh yes. You do? Yeah, more than yeah. one. 
More than one. And they're, they're and, not, and we're talking somebody who but, swings a hammer, right? Yeah, and like yeah, leads a crew. Yeah, yeah. The guys yeah. who lead the crews, if it's the the one leader with one helper, they're ranging anywhere from about sixty five thousand up to about eighty five thousand, yeah. you know, as the leader and yeah. and then we're still paying their helper that goes yeah. with them. Um, but I have some of my teams which I've you know, encouraged over the years that they can grow with us. Yeah. And if they're helping to train the next generation of talent and they're gonna build the number of helpers under yeah. their squad, now they're able to manage two or three projects at a time yeah. with three to five helpers. Yeah. And uh, they're making a little money off everybody. And yes, I've, I've got crew leaders that yeah. are making 120,000 or more. See, that's that's amazing. That's freaking ridiculous. And what's cool about that is most, most people think that you go into construction and you're just gonna make $40,000 a year, but that's, it's really not the situation, but in order to, to fill a role like that, just like you were talking about Gary, like performance based things, like we're, we're, we're the same way. Like for, for our subcontractors, it's like, here's the budget. You like you go out and do it. I mean, I've, I've had block masons who have done a $20,000 block job in three days. Yeah, they right. just come and knock it out. It's like, wow, you make yeah. great money yeah. this week. They'll put from six people yeah. to yeah. 20 people yeah. on that job site. Yeah, and yeah and it's just like knock ants it out. crawling it's all amazing. over the building. Yeah, it's it is, amazing. It is. But, but what that takes is that takes a person who's gonna who's willing to say, okay, I'm willing to, and it's actually, that's that's forcing people to accept the reality of, even as an, as an employee, you run a business. Your business is you. Yep. And you have your, you just have one customer. It's your, your, it's your quote unquote employer, right? So that method actually forces people to take responsibility for the fact that they're running a business as an employee. And that, that's why, that's why we moved to peace rate is like this, the same reason. It's the only way that's actually fair to both parties and has the possibility to be a win-win. And so I think that what, what we have to do, and it's good that we're talking about it, is we just basically have to let people know, like, look, hourly is not a thing. Like, it's just really not like it's it, that at a certain point, the entire economy will move away from any anybody being hourly at all and if you are getting hourly realize that if, if a really well-established company is willing to pay you hourly it's because they're deriving way more value you could work three times as slow and they'd still make money off of what you're doing <laughs> which means there's opportunity to negotiate there that's what that means yeah. Right? right right yeah and, and just to, to kind of touch base on that about the training and things like that, we try to spend a lot of extra time making sure that the team is trained, going through those types of situational stuff. Mm -hmm. if we're having issues those week or with quality control, things like that. We definitely address those, um, but the potential is there, right? A yeah. lot of, when, when I was graduating high school, it was all computers and medical. That was what was pushed all the time. Yeah. Computers, medical, computers, medical. Um, but there is a lot of this industry where you can do really well for yourself. And I think that's what part of this is, is uh, a lot of the people think that there's no money in this industry or it's not worth it. But this, it, in my opinion, this has become very rewarding. I mean, I love what we do and it goes a long way. And when you start seeing new people come on and how they do things, um, it, tends to, it tends to be encouraging to everybody else around it. When my project manager that started with me seven years ago could barely run a paintbrush when he started and now he's running jobs for us, that's the training. And, and so what I've noticed is over time, now that we're systemized, now that we have those systems in place, now as the new generations of guys are coming in, they're falling into the fold much faster because the training is already there. Everybody around is doing the same things the same way and yeah. it just makes it easier every step of the way. And if I can implore all of you guys, and I'll part of the solution here is, is that I, I'm trying to take advantage of every opportunity to visit a high school career fair. Mm -hmm. You know, any mm -hmm. chance yeah. to speak to the kids out there, yeah. to show them that the trades is a viable alternative to those who aren't going to pursue right. college or yeah. pursue it all the way through. Yeah. And, and that there's legit jobs and career opportunities, and it doesn't mean you have to swing a hammer every day. Yeah. You might start that way until yeah. you learn the skills you need, but you know, in, in the role that I'm in today, it's my job is finding talent. My job is building processes and systems mm -hmm. using Excel spreadsheets. It's much more technical and, and you know, the, the, everything I do is anything but the trades. Yeah. You know, I, yeah. the, the trades that I sell, that's my product. That's what yeah. I sell is the trades, the service and the, the labor behind yeah. that. So, yeah. um, but you know, all, all this stuff we're having to do to find the talent and all that yeah. obviously adds to our costs. That's yeah. and it kind of rolls into the inflation conversation. Yeah. And, uh, but what kind of inflation are you guys seeing the most of? Where's it hitting you the hardest? Uh, get back, I wanna circle back just a little bit before I go into inflation, but uh, make no mistake that when getting into this industry, the one thing that you can count on is that you're gonna have hard work. It's going to be hard work. It's you're physically uh, gonna, especially when you're starting out. There's a lot of physical demands because the the new guy doesn't know how to do the skilled stuff yet. So you're doing the stuff that makes the skilled guys work faster. 
my encourage you if you are looking to come into the industry is come in with eyes wide open with your expectations set correctly and know that it's temporary learn try to predict what your lead man needs to get him what he needs to speed him up and just learn what you have to do to become that lead man to where you start rolling in the money and helpers get paid very well especially if they show value hey, which is what this is all about lead person <laughs> lead person <Yeah>. that's correct <laughs> <laughs> all right now on to the inflation yes in order to get the talent that most people want in their homes like they don't want a shabby job they want a quality job well the guys that produce quality work in an environment like we're in now uh, those guys are in demand all right they aren't cheap because they're busy they this is my price um, we, and and the other thing too is because they're busy they're in a hurry to get things done I think the expectations that we're going to be uh, with your expectations of, of a job uh, you can expect that inflation to be affect you more under the current circumstances than maybe a, any other time in history that, well, in our history uh, of being in the business. So um, inflation has hit us on the labor end, it's hit us on the material end, and it's hit us on the management end with all of us in this field. So we're going to kind of address each one of those uh, three areas of inflation now and tell how it's affected our business and then we'll circle back around to the solution. Yeah, yeah. I think Raj, I think Raj should start us off. Okay, so as far as the inflation, and there's a couple things going on on my end. I, I've literally had, because we, we do a number of services for our builders, right? You know, yeah. we, do, we do insulation, we do the, the, the shelving, wood and aluminum, we do the gutters, aluminum, the soffit, the, all the stuff, right? The glass, you know, for shower enclosures. Um, we've literally had, I think, six increases in the last 10 months mm -hmm. from each manufacturer. Did anything decrease after it increased? Oh, most definitely not. <laughs> <laughs> right. Most right. definitely not, no. And, 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 and uh, it, it stemmed too in the beginning, uh, um, was part of the, the, the Texas freeze, jacked up all the prices, well, get an excuse to jack up all the prices <laughs> for, for the, um, the chemicals involved with insulation. And of course, as companies spread out elsewhere as well, you know, it's the same manufacturers that do the uh, chemicals sometimes do the fiberglass. You know, mm -hmm. and, and the uh, and aluminum, you know, skyrocketed last year. You know, that, that affected everything. You know, between my, my gutters, my soffit, my fascia, uh, anything else that involves metal products. You know, it's just everything's directed from that perspective on the on the product side. Um, and then, you know, you, you have your uh, your expectations of these jobs, right? You know, like these, these, these builders, like yourself, you know, have a budget of X number of dollars mm -hmm. to do the gutter work to do the insulation to do this or that, and I tell you, well, my I literally have to tell you that my manufacturer increased my price by fifteen to thirty percent. Mm -hmm. So I, I I would love to eat that, but at the same time I have to pay my guys who do the quality work. I have to pay you know the the manufacturers so, you know to actually the product I need. So that's where I have to say, hey, you know, like I have to be real with you. That's where the budget currently is on our end. So I try to tell you, and, and it's going to hurt some people, but I'm like, this is where I'm at right now. Yeah, yeah, for sure. And so it's funny that you asked, once it went up, did it go back down? Like that's, it just doesn't happen that way. Because think, think of a person, like that, that comes down to your, your basically, at the end, a lot of that comes down to labor in, in what we're doing. How easy is it to give someone a pay raise and then say, okay, okay. Now, now I've brought you to 35 an hour. I know we just said no, no hourly, but we, I brought you to 35 an hour. We're going to go back down to 30. Everybody cool? Is that fine? <laughs> Nobody's going to be okay with that. So, so it's once, once prices go up, like you were saying, like a lot of people talk about prices normalizing. That doesn't mean prices are going back down. Right. That just means they're not going like this. It means they're just, go, they're just going like that. Now we're back to like a steady increase rather than a spike. Yeah, I know you've got a lot to say about it. I got plenty to say. Let's, let's, I'm okay. really curious. <laughs> <laughs> well, um, no, I mean, mainly, obviously, the increases. We're yeah. seeing guys unprecedented increases every quarter. Every single quarter, I'm getting emails, letters from the vendors going, hey, that's 3% going up at 6%. Uh, Windows, I've seen 15% yeah. on some stuff. Yeah. Um, every single avenue of the stuff that we're doing is continuing to go up. And so, and, and just like you said, it's never going to come back down, but what it'll do, it'll level off. Yeah. And how, how this affects the, the jobs and everything that we're doing is once these prices are on that rise, 
we have to catch them as they go. I mean, can you imagine trying to go back every every day or every week and checking your every material? Yeah, I yeah. mean, that's basically where we're at right now, right? Like we have to make yeah. sure that the prices that we were bidding these jobs at last week or last month are still the same that they are when we're putting out a bid. And it's so difficult to make sure that we stay on top of everything as it's moving. And again, you know, some of the good ones send out a letter, but sometimes you just get an invoice and you're like, what is this? You know what I mean? And so you have to stay up on that. It makes it very difficult to do in these times. Yeah, yeah it does. Yeah, the number one question I get from people is, uh, so how are you doing with the cost of lumber? Right, because the yeah. news made such a yeah. big deal about yeah, it, you yeah, know? Yeah, yeah. And, and it's true. I mean, what, you know, we used to buy a, a, a board for $15. At one point, it was up to like $130 yeah. for the same board. Yeah. And now it's come back down to about $30, $35 for the yeah. same board. So yeah. it's definitely inflated from where it was. Yeah. It's nowhere compared to where it went. Yeah. And uh, it did stabilize. I think lumber is the only thing that's actually done that. The, yeah, yeah, exactly. That is literally the one and only item yeah. I can think of to, yeah. to give that option for yeah. All the subcontractor costs, you know, for an electrician, a plumber, an air conditioning guy, they all raise their prices and they're not going to come back yeah. down and discount it afterwards. No. No. That, that did not change a bit. <laughs> and, uh, so, it, again, it, the, the inflation is real and, yeah. it, you know, we have to just absorb it, keep up with it. If, if your manufacturer is charging, you know, you, the supplier, 15% more, that means the contractor on the other end of it is going to pay 30% more because the, the supplier has to make the margin as well, the yeah. cost of doing business. And yeah. that's you know, why we all do this. So, But that's where these things exponentially grow. So yeah. hopefully we get this world under control. And uh, uh, I, the biggest thing I learned through this was I had to rewrite my contracts and agreements yeah. now to include a material escalation clause yeah. because we genuinely got hurt a bit by jobs yeah. that were contracted <laughs> that then take a couple months to start yeah, yeah, and then a few months to finish and yeah. we're in the midst of a job and now all the prices of what I had budgeted at are yeah. twice or three times as much, you know, yeah. I, I didn't have the heart to go mm -hmm. back and beg those customers right. for more money. Right. And uh, so I just absorbed it, I ate it, but yep. then I changed the terms of my agreement so that yeah. now I call that out in advance as a real hazard of this industry, yeah. something that can be run yeah. into, so it's no surprise. And and what's funny is, you know, you're. T I think a lot of people might not realize that, I, I think pretty much for everybody at this table, we give a fixed price when we sign a contract. It's not like materials and labor plus X percentage, right? Like that that doesn't really exist. That may have been There like are a contractors standard. that do that out there. There are contractors that do that, but I, I that's mean. That's where you get raked over the coals over and over dude, again. That's that like. That big scary word called change order, oh right? Oh my God. I, can't, I literally can't even imagine running a business like that. But because we because we give a fixed price, <clears throat> there's there's a degree of risk to us in do it. There's a big degree of risk to us in doing that actually. But that's how we feel is, is an honest way to do it. Um, but I, you know, kind of the the place I, I was going with that is we it, we can't put ourselves in a position to be hurt if we're the the honest like good actors in in the arena, right? So it's like it it's it's a it's a good thing that we're putting protections in place to protect ourselves. But at, at the end of the day. There's there's so much uh, extra work that's going into it currently, like with the current situation, and also with people's rising expectations as well. Mm -hmm. You know, with with uh, Amazon.com, I can probably order something today and have it delivered this afternoon. Yeah. Living living in in Tampa, so with expectations going up, our you know our industry is is lagging a bit. Like I'm sure we're all doing everything we can to, to move it and bring it up, uh, but it, but it's lagging. And that also. Is having a, it's forcing us to hire more talented people. And now we're competing with different actual industries. I know a guy who runs a pest control company who was having dinner at Burns Steakhouse and recruited the waiter who is making great money at Burns Steakhouse, like getting like you know three hundred dollars a night in tips every night he worked. And he came in and did pest control, and now he's making six figures doing pest control. It, yeah, I'm, I'm, yeah. I'm glad you brought. I'm glad you yeah. brought up Amazon because yeah. our last conversation was about inflation, oh, yeah. and and now this, it, it, you know, it rolls over. Yeah. S some of the inflation is being caused by the fact that the supply chain issue was there. Right. I couldn't get the accessories that go in the cabinets yeah. from the regular vendor where I get a 45, 55 percent discount. Yeah, Instead, yeah, yeah. I had to order through Amazon and pay right. the full retail price, yeah. right. and then I have to translate yeah. that into my cost as yeah. well. And yeah. so again, where supply chain ties into the inflation yeah. Yeah. you know how that rolled over yeah yeah and and so the the fun, so think about like take um take ams take any like retailer right like my understanding is that a typical retailer that sells like a good right like this watch you know this this microphone they're selling it at at three to five times what they pay for it 
essentially, for lack of better words, right? Like, if you think about the standards of pricing in, in the industry for contracting, it's not nearly that high, but there's way more work and logistics that goes into running a contracting business than, for say, retailing and selling a watch, right? So I think there's gonna be, I, I could see a big flip in the industry to where instead of, you know, instead of the, the majority of the cost of a contract being the materials and labor, the majority of the cost is running it, and that's maybe like 60% of the cost, and then 40% is the materials and labor. So that- I could see that happening over the next five years. That goes hand in hand with something that you mentioned earlier when yeah. you said you know, anybody that's just getting out of the business because they don't want to deal with it. People, a lot of people, I see that happening, I feel with, like. with yeah. Literally within the last month, I've yeah. had three different people approach me yeah. who have a general contractor license and a roofing license, yeah. and they all say, I'm going to do just roofing from now on. I don't even want these other GC projects. Yeah. Would you want to take them? And, uh, and because again, instead of dealing with 40 trades, yeah. it costs a whole lot less one. to manage one yes. trade. You can do yes. it more efficiently, yes. you know, as long as you've yeah. got the right channel on the product and the labor. Yep. And, uh, but yeah, this is a real thing, guys getting it's out of our industry thing, because, yeah. you know, it's just too complicated and too expensive to do and, it. And, re and I want to pass it to you, Jeff, but a word of encouragement to any, any contractors that are watching, there's, there's a great, you know, piece of information that I got many, many years ago, but I've heard it since then, is if you do the things that other people aren't willing to do, fixed prices, piecework, stuff like that, like setting designs up front. If you're willing to do that, what other people's won't do, what other people won't do, you will be paid for it. That's a, that's a it's cuz it's a valuable service cuz other people won't do it. And Jeff, you're going to carry us into the value yes. conversation, I think. Yeah. I am going to carry us into the value. Oh, man, what a segue. Yes. <laughs> and and to close our last topic out, I'm going to tell you the the reason why you want to go with a contractor that does cover their bases in the contract with the escalation laws uh, for pricing it is not to surprise you with extra costs because I think we can all agree we don't like going to our customers asking for more money right. ever right. we it's just it's it's just a bad feeling to even have to do it yeah. um, but if it's not in there which job do you want us to go bankrupt on <laughs> <laughs> yours and that's the security that you need to understand we're actually giving you by having that in there is that we don't want to go bankrupt on anybody's job but we would if we don't put those types of clauses Protection. in our contract we and have to protect the, the business the worth at that point, you know? yeah what is your yeah. warranty worth at that point as well that's a good point yeah. the uh, you know do you want to be on the ship that is sinking mm -hmm. and the water keeps coming in if, you know are you the one that doesn't get a lifeboat you know, because you were at that end of the job. So at any rate, want to close out with that thought because that's why it's going to be important. It's not a negative thing. It's a positive thing for you. Uh, now we're going to get into uh, the value. Yeah, what, what, what value, besides the price itself, yeah. what value do you bring to the, to the table? Why, why hire a contractor? Right. Why, why indeed? So we, <laughs> the, you've kind of, we've built up to this. You probably can predict what we're going to say on this, but we're going to go through the exercise of saying it out loud for you. Um, I'm going to hand it over because I know that you've got a lot to say on this. Okay. Well, my, my, sim my simple version of it would be is this that is our numbers guy. There, <laughs> <laughs> well, beyond the numbers, it's, it's really a matter of I, I turn jobs away all the time and tell people, you don't need me. Yeah. I'm not going to provide you with a good value. Yeah. You should hire that tradesperson yeah. directly or mm -hmm. those three tradespeople directly. Mm -hmm. It's when you have five, seven or more trades happening at once mm -hmm. that the general contractor is going to provide the real value because somebody has to know what the right hand yeah. and the left hand are each yep. doing mm -hmm. and put that in the right sequential order of events mm -hmm. so that you don't do something to then have to undo it mm -hmm. so that somebody else can come in to do their part. And, and so just making sure that it flows is going to, A, make sure you land on a budget that was planned and yep. two, that you end up finishing in a timeline that was yeah. planned. Yeah, yeah. But uh, that's all like relevant to... Basically what you're doing here is saying that the value that we bring to the table is we've navigated this minefield a dozens of times, hundreds, hundreds of times uh, in the last year and a half or so. So while you're, we've done that. If, if you get into a situation where you have seven trades, we're, we're, if you're trying to navigate that for the first time, it's gonna be a lot more difficult. So our value is in the fact that yeah, it's going to be a bumpy road. Yeah, we're going to get you there, but we're the ones getting you there. We're the ones taking that stress on and 
uh, working those things out. So great point. I think what Jeff's saying is over the years, we've made tons and tons of mistakes. And so <laughs> you shouldn't have to repeat those same mistakes. <laughs> and now we can save you a lot of money because yeah. we've had to pay for them along yeah. the way. Yeah. Right? Yeah. You want to add, Gary? Yeah. yeah, yeah. I mean, when it comes to value, too, I mean, based exactly what you guys were just talking about, okay? Um, one of my big things that I want to touch on, too, is, is what Brad talked about a little bit in the last sentence, uh, the last segment here was um, warranties, okay? Yeah. A lot of people out there, if you're out there looking for the cheapest guy or, or something along those lines, what is his warranty worth, yeah. okay? That's, that's our, one of our biggest values. When, you, when we have an issue, if there's something that comes up, we're gonna be here for yeah. 10, 20, 30 years, right. uh, or at least I plan to be, I don't know if Jeff will be around, but <laughs> at, least, at least at that point, you know, that we can come back and take care of your warranty, whatever that predetermined number is. Um, but uh, even if a customer or uh, another contractor gives somebody a 10 year warranty, uh, they might be flying back to Michigan next <laughs> week afterwards, you know, or or not warranting that. So that's that's kind of a big part of my job. Yeah, I, exactly. Uh, doors are shut, phone don't ring, uh, yeah. you know, whatever it is. Um, but as far as value that we're bringing as a contractor, uh, that really goes into two parts. We have a design phase and a construction phase. And Jeff, we talked about this a couple weeks ago. As you guys are doing this as well. Yeah. Um, and so we go through, we give some 3D renderings of the project, uh, pick out all the materials that we need, make sure that the project is how it's supposed to be from Jump Street. Um, and then once you start construction, it makes everything go much smoother. Yeah. Um, touching base with what Jason said as well, as far as uh, we've been through this, we know. Uh, this may be our customer's first renovation, uh, we've done it hundreds of times. And so while some customers have done others in the past, they've done previous projects, it also, it helps that we've got the experience as well. Yeah. Have yeah. they done one of those projects in the last three years or two years? Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> right. <laughs> Yeah, right. Quiet, what, right. The, the best contractors that you see out there, what are those contractors doing that's, that's right? What, what value are they bringing to those clients? It's making them get hired all the time. Well, well I, I want to touch base real quick because you mentioned, you know, having the general contractor, you know, be in charge of those larger projects, right? So when I do with the homeowner directly, if they have one or two things, it's not so bad. But then when I, when I have to start educating the homeowner on when to do what, after what goes, what passes inspections, mm -hmm. I only, I prioritize what's in my bubble. My bubble is insulation. <laughs> and beyond that, that's all on you guys. <laughs> you know, yeah. So I tell the homeowner, well, you should have this. They're like, what's that? But if the homeowner didn't tell you about those three new roof <laughs> yeah. penetrations that are Correct. coming before yes. you apply Correct. the spray foam, Correct. that presents an extra challenge for yeah. the contractor. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. exactly. Might result in extra money. Yeah. Yeah. You know? yeah. Well. yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, well, yeah. I, I, had, I had an interesting conversation with, uh, you know, for a while, um, we, we moved our, basically we, we had moved our, our, our stated, uh, profit and overhead on our contract up by, by 2%, you know? And so he, so somebody was basically asking me like, Hey, so everybody else is at this, you're at this, you're, you're 2% more. What's, what's the deal? I thought the going rate was X and I, and I'm like, so, uh, we'll, we'll, for the, for the sake of keeping it an honest, I'll, we'll say Bob. And, and, uh, so I, so I asked him, I say, Bob, when I first got here, you said that you called seven people and I was the only person that called you back. Aren't I worth, you know, maybe the number was 3% or whatever, just making this up. But aren't I worth 3% more? And, it, and then it's like, hmm, okay. For answering and the phone. So, and right. sign the contract. <laughs> and, it, and it's because it's like, even if the number was, was 20%, if you're the only person that's actually there willing to pick up the ball and run with it, right. That that is such a huge value to that person because he needs what he ha he's gonna he's of a, a state of mind where he's gonna get what he wants done done, but it's like can I handle it for him? Could our team handle it for him and get it done in at least a relatively smooth manner? Even you know there's always hiccups, but like handle those and get it done for him, or would he have a project that lasts 18 months and winds up costing probably as much as or more than if he just paid us to manage it for him? Jeff yeah. said I was a numbers guy, so let's put that in perspective. What he just said, three yeah. percent. Yeah. So if I'm going to spend a hundred thousand dollars of my money to remodel yeah. my house, yeah. do I want to take a chance with the guy that's a little? Or would I be willing to pay one hundred and three to the guy yeah. that I felt very comfortable right. was going to be able to do this right. and have the proven track or, record for it? Or one hundred ten. Well, how much do you pay for a the, What's the value of certainty? You know, doesn't do uh, any decisions. How much do they get? <laughs> and yeah. you're talking about three percent when right. you you, know, right. you tip your waitress at twenty. Right. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. So, the, I mean, there's, it's, you know, the, the value probably seems like blatant to us and like any contractors that are watching, but you do have to continue to remind yourself of like, oh, what am I actually providing the people who are going under contract with me? It's a lot. Right. Like it's a shit ton. And so that actually goes into the, into the next like timeline and expectation mm -hmm. thing is the, 
even if, let's say you have a project that's planned for four months and it takes six, that's still a good value. If you have something that happens and you handle the problem and the customer doesn't have to, doesn't have to figure it out themselves and go through that and basically learn to become a contractor, then fix the problem because they'd have to do that. That's still a great value. So what, what we've seen on, on our timelines is we, we give a projected timeline, right? But it's, we're very clear that this is not a guarantee. This is not a set in stone. This, the timeline is not a contract. Right. This is me informing you of basically the order of events, how long they typically take. Now your project is fully custom. Mm -hmm. So our, our thing, and I'm sure there's, there's shared sentiment on this, is we never make the timeline more important than the quality. Mm -hmm. Because you gotta live with it forever. So I'll, I'll be the numbers guy for a second. If you take, and I'll do some, some math on my phone real quick. If you take a house that you're gonna live in for say 20 more years, right? A lot of people we work, we work with, they're gonna be in the house for maybe 20 more years. That's 1,040 weeks. Even if a project is delayed, something crazy, even if a project is delayed 16 weeks, that's 16 divided by 1,040, that's 1.5% 1 1 of the time you're gonna actually enjoy the project. Is one and a half percent, that's a rounding error for, for most people I deal with. That's, that's how I think of it. That's, I'm like, look, the timeline is, it's obviously it's important, yes it's important, but the quality and having it done correctly is so much more, because you gotta live with it. But isn't, isn't that always as far as like setting that expectation, right? Yes. What, what are the real expectations right now? Yes. What does it take to start oh, yeah, a job? Yeah, yeah. What yeah. does it exactly. take to a job? So, you know, with us, we're usually, I'm usually setting clients about two and a half, three months out before we actually yeah, start sure. the project, yeah. right? Um, and then it just depends. Each project is a little bit different. Uh, most of our bathroom renovations, even small ones, are six weeks, you know what I mean? Yeah. It just really depends on what your project is, how much custom stuff you have into it, and, and the time frame, and again, back to the delays and everything else we've been talking about. Uh, but I really do believe it's about setting that expectation, uh, that big change order word that we all hate to talk about. If, if they do have to come in, in our industry, it's mainly just because a client changed. That's, that's yeah. mainly what our change orders consist yep. of. Yep. Um, Same. But when we do produce they get that change, and they want to add something else. Yes. Yeah. But when we do produce that change order, um, we'd like to put a time frame with it too. Hey, this job is going to be X amount of dollars more. Plus, it's going to delay the job a week or whatever it is. Yeah. Um, and that keeps that expectation. It makes them understand that. Oh, well, I didn't think about that because it never fails. How somebody will be like, Hey, well, can't we just add this whole room? To the, to the remodel, you're already here, right? And you're yeah. still gonna finish before but they the Christmas still, party, right? But they, yeah. yeah, but yeah. Gary promised me you'll be out of here by Christmas. Okay, but that's that's the realization of it, right? We have to set those expectations. Yeah, yeah, yeah. big thing. Uh, also, one of the things I wanna touch on, especially when we're, we're talking about the timeline, is, and have we translated? We start on the timeline? Yeah. yeah. Okay, that's we're still on that, making sure. <laughs> <laughs> so at any rate, when we're talking about the timeline, uh, we get a lot that there is, uh, well, I have company in, I would right. like it, nobody to show up for these three days. Uh, you know, we can accommodate that. Not showing up is the easy part because we're really busy, right? <laughs> <laughs> so, but, you back. <laughs> yes, we got this. Now, that delay was only three days, right? right? I'm gonna have company in town for three days. What does that do to our schedule? The, the word train wreck comes to mind <laughs> because everything oh, yeah. is connected yeah. and everything is on a track and a path. So as soon as you interrupt that schedule, it was only three days. But now that was the three days that the plumber was gonna show up. But now, because we told, told, told him he didn't have to come to that job that day, he could do something else. He started another project that's gonna take him two or three days to start. And that affects the guy that follows the plumber, and that affects the guy that follows him. And so everybody's schedule has to be changed. So logistically, we got people in management spending a lot of time having to reschedule everybody and we're doing it with an unknown factor because we don't know that plumber's project could be in a hospital that's taking him a week and now we can't actually put another plumber on that project because he's on the permit, he's on the permit. Yeah. so we're, we're our hands are tied so your three-day delay could result in a week or two week delay and then that can run into other contractors that we had scheduled that have to change their schedule and who knows what project they have already started. So when that happens, it can be a much larger impact to your job than you perceive. The best way is tell your company that something is happening or whatever it is that's going on in your life. And if you can't handle the delay, 
it's kind of like the the cop would say if you don't do the if you can't do the time don't do the crime <laughs> yeah. if you can't handle the delays that could result in it and be prepared for those you know do everything in your power to avoid any delay on your project okay so now moving on oh you have something to comment well, on that well we're on timeline and expectations yeah. so yeah, still, yeah. yeah i was going to say just that real expectations on time uh you know it, it's anywhere from a month to two months just planning a project like this yeah. you know it might be two or three right. weeks before i can get there to give you an initial estimate right. in order to give you some ideas to think about so right. that the next time around we can do some actual design and more right. realistic budgeting estimating and then you're still probably not ready to commit because you want to go back and redline a few things balance mm -hmm. out the equation you know expectation versus what i have to spend in the bank yeah. and, and and then we're going to get to a point of a contract mm -hmm. now does that contract require engineering that might throw another four weeks into the rent, right. into it at this point in time. It used to take only a couple weeks to get yep, plans. Yeah. It could be four to eight weeks to get plans from an engineer or architect right now, yep. depending on the detail yep. of the project. And then we're gonna apply for permit. Yep. Permits that used to take two weeks now take six weeks, you know, or more, right? <laughs> or more. Yep. Depends yeah. on the municipality. Yeah. You know, we got, what, 26 municipalities just in Pinellas County alone, yeah. and they each have their own little different interpretations of, you know, what they see in the Florida Building Code. Right. You know, now we might be ready to start a project three, four months down the road after we thought about yeah. doing a project. Yeah. And then when we start, what do we have? We have maybe four weeks up to 14 weeks or more, you know, into the average job. Yeah. And I sometimes, as Jeff put it, you know, it can be getting into an eight or 10 month job now if, if materials are creating issues and all that. So, yeah. you know, that's what to expect in the way of timelines and then what to expect in the way of costs. And, uh, a lot of people still have it in their head that, uh, you know, oh, new construction only costs 100, 120 bucks a square foot, right? And uh, so they think they're gonna build this, you know, uh, thousand square foot room addition for 100 grand. No, that's not the case. Even in new home construction, I have a good friend of mine that works for Pulte Homes, one of yep. the largest production builders out there, and he says that they are building um, 4,000 square foot homes and uh, starting at $800,000. Yep. Their average price, retail price, selling those homes for is at two, $214 per square foot. That is today's current rate right. for them yep. in a big new time. Construction. In new construction. New construction, which building is the four, cheapest. Building yeah. 4,000 square feet or more. Yeah, yeah so which when, is highly efficient because so, you're doing so much volume. Well, you've yeah. got, a, you got an empty mm -hmm. lot you're going to drop off the materials and start putting together your erector set yeah. and uh as opposed to when i'm tearing apart somebody's house before i can start adding to it and the materials got dropped on the road but i have to hand cart them yep. to the backyard yeah the concrete truck can't get back there so i got to rent a concrete yep. pump to yep. pump it to the backyard yep. and again you're not building four thousand square foot of stuff you're yep. building 800 square feet right. and, uh, infrastructure that you have to work around so, that you didn't know was so there. <laughs> in all reality a lot yeah. of people are, have unrealistic expectations yeah. about these bigger projects and additions whereas you know the real value of them could be 250 a square foot up to 450 a square foot exactly. or even more yeah, yeah. Okay. for sure and that's what I was going to touch on as well is um, when you have the small what about the smaller ones what about when you get yeah. clients that call you and go hey, yeah, yeah yeah hey I want to add 150 square feet to my and house it's going to have a master bathroom I mean, inside of it yeah exactly yeah. and then you have to tell that customer that hey so you know I mean look, and yeah look at these pro look at these prices <laughs> <laughs> it's just this little area it's just this small bathroom they don't yeah. understand that that doesn't improve because actually if we still have to get the trades out there we still have to get those things done it's yeah. it's very difficult on yeah. smaller yeah. projects as well and, and of course that same customer doesn't want the 99 cent tile that was on sale they yeah, want yeah, the yeah, eight dollar yeah. stuff that yeah. none of their girlfriends had yep, yep. and by the way they picked up this custom piece of glass on their cruise in Italy can you put that in the middle of yes. the shower wall <laughs> and uh, they, right. these are the types of expectations yep. they set for us on what they want yep. out of it right. they want these projects they see on house.com yeah. or on yeah. HGTV yeah. and uh, with yeah. no idea of what the real value of some of those yeah. trades are. And, and here's yeah. and here's the and here's the best thing about it is we have the skill set to do that and that's that's yeah, that's we, the good thing here is much. is is regardless of the price like I, I think anybody here we we know enough people we can figure out how to get somebody the money like if money is the issue we can help like we can figure out how to get you the money to do it it doesn't matter like banks have enough have enough money to do any project you could ever think of right. we can figure out how to get the money the thing is the shortage is the people who could do it mm -hmm. and that that's really what's what's being provided here like that's actually the real value you know yeah, there's it's, no scarcity of money yeah <laughs> exactly there's no there really there isn't like the federal government prints more money anytime they need more. Yeah. So, I mean, you know, it's like, we, we can get you more money. The, the thing is like finding a tile installer who can do a mosaic that's just a square cutout, lay out the whole wall correctly around it so you don't have slivers yes. everywhere well, and yeah. crap. 
Well, Gary said it earlier. He says, yeah. you know, you guys that approach you say, oh, yeah, I'm a great yeah. tile installer. You know, <laughs> my first question over the phone is, what brand of tile saw do you own? Yeah. And, uh, <laughs> oh, well, uh, oh, well, I've got a grinder, you know. <laughs> Tells a lot yeah. about the tools yeah. that a man owns. How long is your snap cutter? Yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> we, that would be everything you need yeah. to know right there. Yeah. I, I tell you what, we, we need to do because we can certainly yeah. talk for hours yeah, more. For sure. Know, we can expand yeah. on these topics. For sure. Yeah, absolutely. So really to, to kind of to put a bow on this, if, if you want to get in touch with any, any of these people, uh, in the description of the video, we'll label out the, the phone number, the email. So anybody that you want to get in contact with, you can. Uh, but really, you know, to, to kind of put a bow on it, I'd, I'd like for Jason to talk a second about collaboration versus competition, because we do run basically the same business here. We could be competing with each other, or we're choosing to collaborate because it's more valuable. Well, and it kind of took the words out of my mouth in that. Is that Perfect. Love there, <laughs> there, there is a lot of people who are scared of the competition. You know, I started years ago sharing my budgets and sharing my pricing with mm -hmm. guys like Brad and guys like Gary, yeah. because, you know, People would say, why would you share your information? Or aren't they just gonna use it against you? I can't count on one hand how many times we've competed for any one job in the last month, much less the last yeah. year. Yeah. And uh, there's more than enough work out so there for everybody. Yeah. This yeah. Tampa Bay market is the number one market in the country that people are moving to. Yeah. The great yeah. free state could, of Florida. It could be in the world. And, uh, well, it, we're, it could be in the world, actually. And uh, uh, Texas was the number one state in the country. Yeah. Florida was number two, yeah. but Tampa Bay was the number one market you know, yeah. uh, that we're moving into. Oh, yeah. This area is expanding so fast, yeah. they can't build new homes fast right. enough. Correct. All the existing homes are pretty much sold out. Inventory is yeah. flying off the shelf. It's a yeah. remodeling market, which yeah. we're all into. Yeah. So the opportunities are endless. You know, and, and again, if you're a contractor out there and you think that you want to be part of this round table discussion, mm -hmm. we all have much more to learn from yeah. each other than we do yeah. to, to take away. Yeah. And quite frankly, I, as I arrived here today, I was already receiving another referral into my lap because it was out of the area where Gary wanted to go. Yeah. And then Brad said, ah, it's not really the scope yeah. of work I want right yeah. now. And you know what? It has to be a perfect fit for me. Yeah. And we reciprocate those back yeah. up to the north end of the town yeah. where we don't want to be. Yeah. So, you know, there's this collaboration is powerful. So we encourage other contractors to seek us out and let's, let's have a relationship. Yeah. And exactly. uh, Brad and I love to carry on these discussions on the golf course. And uh, so we can go have some fun. We can make some money together. We can figure yeah. out how to save time, be more efficient, and uh, create resources for each other, share those resources. Yeah. There's many, many more benefits to come of us yep. working together. So we'd 100%. encourage you to join us as well. Yep, if, absolutely. If you're uh, if you're somebody looking for a career change and you think the trades might be for you, I, I, there's somebody here will hire. Somebody you. here is hiring. <laughs> you're good. If you're, if you're right now, talented, right now, yeah. Yeah. If you're talented, right. somebody here will hire you. Yeah. Right. And, yeah. and and if you're a consumer out there ready to do a project, and any one of us would love to help you, one of us will call, hire you too. Call one of us, <laughs> and we will put you in the hands of the person who's the yeah. best, fit, best fit for you and your project. And yeah. uh, and uh, and we're happy to address any more of those concerns that yeah. we discussed today. Supply chains, labor, yeah. inflation you know what to expect and yep. you know what to get out of it yep last last plug uh be sure you hit the subscribe button below the more uh people that we can reach with videos like this the more it helps all of us the more we can do more projects and share our lessons learned with that thank you for watching appreciate your attention everybody do a peace sign peace like comment share <laughs> like comment and share <laughs>